All right, you beautiful humans, we are continuing to test the M1 iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch version. And I wanna answer those questions about whether you need to take that leap up to that 16 gigs of RAM when it comes to your video editing needs. A couple of disclaimers here. WWDC has not happened, so I don't have iPad OS 15. I'm dealing with 14.6. Also too, it's a very optimized hardware with the software. We're gonna be working in LumaFusion. Also too, H.265 is what we're also working with here from the Sony FX6 and FX9, as well as H.264 and 265 footage from the Sony A7S III. So for those questions out there that you may have as to whether your 4K footage will work on the M1 iPad Pro, if it's from your iPhone, your Sony A6400, your Canon M50, this is 10-bit footage, H.265. I think you're gonna be good. Anyway, let's get you behind the scenes, a bit of a walkthrough here, show you some data, and then you can make up your own mind. All right, before we get into it, let me show you this app that I have that we're gonna be measuring uh, a few data points here. And keep in mind, I do not, this thing hasn't been updated in over a year, I believe. So as far as the compatibility is concerned, uh, we get some details here. iOS 14.6, again, we don't know what 15 is gonna bring, uh, the M1. So you'll, you'll get these data points here. We will get uh, graphs here, so we will be able to read the CPU, uh, the memory, battery, storage, but nothing with the GPU. We can go into details. Oh, we'll, actually, we'll go here into memory. I have over 10 gigs just sitting free. Wired, I got about a gig uh, for the, the apps and, of course, the, the system itself. And there's definitely the swap memory here, but this is a 16 gig iPad Pro. And before we get started, let me just thank Philip Bloom and Klaus Anderson for the uh, FX6 and FX9 footage, as well as Josh Yo with Make Art Now for the Sony A7 III footage. H.264, so there's a, or I'm sorry, 265 timeline. It is a 709, a Rec 709 10 bit timeline here. And let me just kind of show you when we do a share here. So ultra 150 megabits per second. And this is a 4K timeline, 24 frame timeline. I like 24 frames. Now, what we're gonna do here, let's bring this up to the side. All right, let's move this over a little bit. Now, just opening up those two apps, the LumaFusion and the app uh, that is managing this or monitoring this, we're still just under um, 10 gigs, so 9,800 megabytes. And you will see, so this timeline here, again, a 4K timeline, and we're just scrubbing through. I've got some audio in here. I've got some transitions, some text, even like a, a B-roll section here. So just moving through it. Now, of course, this is not an editing tutorial. This is, is not a color grading tutorial. This is just to show you that we're scrubbing through and let's go and see what we have as far as, let's do a little bit of grading a little, you know, just, just a little bit of correction. I think I have a LUT already on here. Oh no, I don't, I don't have a LUT on this one. Let's bring this up a little bit. So we're just gonna tax the system, keeping in mind that I'm aware, that hopefully you're aware, the heavy lifting is really the GPU um, with the CPU. So let's, let's even just go back. As far as the graphs are concerned, that, that little bump above 20% likely was just a little bit, like just doing a little bit of that grading, opening up the app, but it settles back down and then going back to the memory itself, we're still hanging under 10 gigs of free, not including the swap, because again, we'll, we'll try to call up some other things here in a, in a little bit, but just moving through this footage here, let's just move through this. A lot of this footage is just so stunning. I don't even, like if I even touch it to try to grade it, I don't even know what I would do. I mean, I know what I would do, like if I was, sitting here and actually doing client work. Where was there? 
or even for this channel. Bring that up. So we're just adding a bit more. And let me show you something over here. And I feel like I need to call, like, sort of pull up my uh, Bob Ross. So we'll just kind of watch this um, going through. No, no, the Bob Ross thing, just the summoning here in just a sec, but I feel like I wanted to just show you, like there's nothing dropping, no frames. Now I've got this grid here. So in the top left and the bottom right, uh, those are already slowed down. And of course the top right, bottom left, those are not slowed down. Just to show you, I got four clips playing simultaneously on top of each other here in the timeline, you'll see. But my whole thing is, is that my grid is a little bit off, you know? So, I mean, Bob, give it to the man, such good energy, just making art, pushing against the critics here. I'm just doing my own thing. We're just creating what we want to create here. Oh, wait, did we, let's see, did we do anything with this one? Let's see if we've got some here. Like that contrast. So we'll bring that brightness up here. Mess with that contrast a little bit. Ooh, I really do. I would love to have a cinema camera. All right. So just slight corrections, adding in the LUT. This is all baked into LumaFusion. No third party here. Oh, one second. Is that one corrected? Oh, it is. I think, I think we have, yeah. So we've got the LUT on there. All right. So just playing through it. And as far as this app is concerned, like I said, I can only speak to, I'm looking at the performance. And so the, like I said, the CPU is fine. GPU, I, I am sure the GPU is getting taxed, but I can't read that out like I can on iStat menu that I do on the Mac mini and MacBook Air. All right, so let's actually do something here. So let's go ahead, let's open up some more apps. Let's let's get some, some more going here. All right, so looking at all of these, we've got LumaFusion, Open Photoshop, Call of Duty, Safari, Geekbench, Lightroom, uh, Twitter. I mean, I could keep opening apps, but but the point is, let's go back to all right, so as far as the RAM is concerned, looks like we have about seven gigs that is free, but wired is only about 1.3. So do keep in mind that there is that swap. And of course, swap existed before the whole M1 thing. It's just how the swap occurs, how the efficiency occurs here uh, with this type of memory. And as far as the graphs are concerned, looks like we got like a few like little spikes here, but although it does look like this app may have restarted on its own, I did not restart it. So again, with iPad, as we know, like if it, if it needs some kind of resource or if it decides to just kind of kill the app or get rid of the Ram or purge the Ram and give it back to whatever program it needs. But I don't know why that would have restarted on its own. That being said, over seven gigs still available here that's just free, just floating around, but we still have more uh, through that swap. So those things are open, scrubbing through here. Let's just, I know we keep scrubbing through, but I'm just trying to show you that there's, there's nothing here. Oh, got to hit play. All right, so we're still playing. Ram's dropping a little bit here, 6,600. Let's see how that grid works. Because again, CPU and the GPU taking that hit. There we go. Here, let's let's scroll back on that real quick. Because I think it stuttered just the way that I hit the thing. All right, transition to those four clips playing simultaneously. You'll see the free. It's, it's act, asking for more RAM. And the one thing that I will tell you is that all of the testing that I did on the M1s with Final Cut Pro is that it was hungry for RAM. It's efficient. I don't have any issues in Final Cut Pro on the M1 whatsoever. But I will say from an editing standpoint, I have found that having the extra RAM is helpful. 
However, in this case, I still have all of this free RAM. And iPad, iPad OS with the hardware is extremely efficient. I will just put it out there again, just to say that we don't know what's to come. So I know that some of you are still on the periphery, on the fringe of, do, do I want to, and I hear this often, future-proof. I don't really know how far out you're trying to future-proof, but the thing is, is that I'm telling you that you likely are not um, working with cinema camera footage. And even if you are, you're not editing this on an iPad Pro. Maybe you'd cut some of it in the field or do something just to see what it looks like. Because again, with this display, it's really amazing, but I highly doubt it that you'd be working with this type of footage on an iPad Pro, I'm just saying. So for me, even having 16 gigs of RAM, I like having the extra storage of the one terabyte internal, but I will also say, I'm admitting, I do like to have the extra RAM because again, I don't know what's to come. So as far as your buying decision here, your wallet may appreciate the fact that you just choose the eight gigs and I believe the swap and everything that you need allocated to it at this time right now should be fine. But WWDC is around the corner. So I'm, I'm just saying. So why don't we go ahead and just do a quick export of the footage here. So we will go movie files. Hold on, let me, let me grab my timer. All right, so we are going to export, as you'll see, video quality ultra, 4K. Gonna save this. And. All right. So here we go. Five minute timeline with some of that correction, text. No real transitions or anything. Why don't we go ahead? So first, before before we kind of fast forward, you'll see the RAM looks like it's asking for more RAM, but just moving right along here, we're hovering at around 2.5 gigs of what it's really asking for as far as wired is concerned. Um, and then there's that active and inactive. So you know, again, if if the app needs it, it can swap it from other um, other apps if it needs to but the free RAM is still, now we're just under six gigs. But like I said, if you had an eight gig uh, machine, it'll swap it just fine. I mean, the fact that I have all of that free RAM, all right, let's just, we'll fast forward through this and get you to the end. All right, getting close here. We get some of that free RAM coming back. So 246 on this. Two minutes, 46 seconds on this five minute timeline with this level of footage, H.265. All right, and as you'll see here, it looks like the free RAM is, is coming back. So just hanging out, doing nothing. I know that many of you either are looking to make that buying decision or maybe you've already purchased an eight gig uh, version or the 16 gig and you might be thinking like, whew, you know, if, if I got the eight gig, it looks like I'm good. And then for those of you that maybe picked up the 16, you're like, oh my gosh, I just spent way too much on this thing because it didn't really even utilize it all. All I can tell you is right now, as I said before, once we get iPad OS 15, and if we potentially get Logic Pro X, Final Cut Pro on the iPad, if that does happen, I will be testing those out to see if there's any difference. So I'm not sure if this helps or confuses you even more. All I can tell you is that this is what I found. So and I'm sharing it with you just as I did, scrubbing through, playing it back, doing a little bit of correction. So getting out of here, hit me up in the comment section below, go over there and hang out with me over there on Twitter. I am definitely in those places the most, love hanging out with all of you. And you go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. I'm gonna keep creating that value for you here. And until we meet again, we'll catch you right back here on the next one.